Why stories? We have a tough time comprehending what's going on in the world today. Let's set the context here. I love this image. It's an artwork created by Nadia Colazzo Lorenz. A few years ago, she was distinguished artist in residence at Grand Valley State up in Michigan. This is nine feet high, 45 feet long. This piece of art is called Incredibly Numb. It's her depiction of today's information overload. It's made from magazines, newspapers, and video images. I think it really gives you a good sense of the challenge that we face today as business leaders and communicators. The world is cluttered and getting our messages through and connecting with the audience is most important to us is incredibly difficult. There's this theory that's been around for probably 20 or 30 years, started in neuroscience, but it's been adopted by many, many other disciplines, including marketing, that the brain has at least three or four parts to it. And at the base of the brain is what is known as the old brain. The old brain, you may know, is associated with the concept of fight or flight. And the research that's been done on this part of the brain, which controls things such as our breathing, and is called the old brain because supposedly it's shared with uh, other forms of life, other mammals, even animals who aren't mammals, um, is that it controls functions such as, does this matter to me? Is it something personal? Is it contrastable? I mean, think about one of our ancestors millennia ago, walking along the edge of the jungle. Is that a tiger I see out of the corner of my eye? Or is it just the breeze blowing? Something that's tangible. Can I get my arms around this concept? Will I remember it? Does it provoke emotions? And most importantly, is it visual? Why does the old brain like stories? Because it's the world's oldest energy saving appliance. No batteries required. The brain on average is only 3% of your body weight, but it con consumes 23% of your energy. So the old brain is using these stimuli above to tell us when we should turn on, turn off, speed up, or slow down. The old brain tells college kids to fall asleep in the middle of a boring lecture. And the old brain is what causes an entire audience to rise to its feet with relief, exhaustion, and an applause at the end of an overly long, overly boring political speech. Now, of these six stimuli, great stories tap all of them, but especially the tangible, memorable, and emotional drivers. But, you know, don't just take my word for it. Let's consider what some other folks have to say about the power of storytelling. You know, in our work, what we've learned is that your story should answer the question of why somebody would work for you, invest in you, partner with you, or buy from you. It's way more important than the colors of your logo or your tagline. And to break through all this information clutter we just looked at, your story should drive your brand. There's a lot of talk in our business about brand, story should come first. In fact, my most recent Forbes, Forbes Agency Council blog, the title is Why S Should Come Before B in the Marketing Alphabet, Story Before Brand. 